Are you still using an old school scope with an old school reticle? Well, there's a lot of new stuff out there. How do you choose? Well, we're talking with Sean Skipper from Leupold Optics about that and much more. This Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Remington Ammunition, Arms Corps, Range Ready Studios, Colt, Silencer Central, and Walther. All right, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. Today on Gun Talk Nation, one of our favorite people in the gun industry, Mr. Sean Skipper from Loophold. Welcome in, man. Hey, Ryan, how you doing, man? Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for being on. Um, so I know you're always off on some adventure. Um, what was the latest adventure that you were on and what's the next one? <laughs> you know, the, the latest one was uh, mid-February. I decided in all of my wisdom to slot a trip right in the middle of trade show season because I, I just didn't feel like I was on the road enough. Yeah. And uh, I went up, took a couple guys up to Alberta and tried hunting wolves for a week uh, over bait. That's how, that's how they typically hunt them up there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was an experience. First time I had done that. Uh, really one of the greater mental challenges you can probably pursue in the, in the hunting field, because it's 12 hour days staring at frozen moose meat and hoping a wolf comes out and you, you know, just like hunting deer and the, the Southeast, you don't want to move. You don't want to breathe. You don't want to be yeah. caught looking at your phone when that wolf runs across. There's 12 hours in sub-zero temperatures staring at a dead moose. Wow. Yeah. Cause probably you tell somebody, Oh, I went on a wolf hunt. If, if they don't know, they go, Ooh, that sounds exciting, intense. Like, no, you're just sitting in the cold. There are some interesting opportunities uh, way, way up north, if, you know, talking like planes, trains, and automobiles to get there where you can kind of run around on snowmobiles and try to spot and stalk them. But uh, for most parts of Canada, you are hunting them over bait because you're, you're dealing with thick timber. So if you chase these wolves too much, they're going to be into the woods and gone in a heartbeat. Yeah. So you, you find openings, you sit there just, just like bait in a bear, you just sit a little bit further away and hope for the best uh one of our guys did kill a wolf uh i saw a couple of them well after shooting light you know they're they're picking me up and then the wolf walks out and kind of gives us like the, oh hey guys <laughs> nothing we can do you about do. it they always know oh yeah they know it's uh, we shouldn't have given them watches i say that all the time watches and calendars i don't know why we handed those out to so many animals but yeah totally but so that was that was a lot of fun um Right now, just been cranking through uh, a lot of office work and, and getting ready for the spring and summer. I got some personal turkey hunts coming up. I'm excited about. Nice. And uh, later this uh, later this year, I'll be heading up to New Zealand to try some some stag. So I'll be I'll Ooh. be bouncing around. Very cool. Um, I I've got a turkey hunt coming up as well. And you know, it's funny. I mean, this ties into what you guys do. Boy, talk about game changer on putting optics um, on shotguns. I mean, and, and this. And it's kind of like the same reasoning as far as whether it's defensive use or turkey hunting or whatever. But I mean, I think there's still a lot of people who who run shotguns where you're actually aiming it on a still object or mostly still object, and they're and they're not putting optics on them yet. Yeah, you know, especially uh, whether it's turkey or you want to talk tactical home defense. You know, shot, shotguns are fantastic tool, obviously, as we all know, but. It, you know, the, the, the aiming point on that, you've just got your, you've largely, you're using a bead, other front sight, things like that. Maybe you throw a fiber optical in there. Okay. Yeah. Close quarters. Like I said, in a home defense situation, I understand that a lot of folks still don't want to use an optic, but if you're trying to shoot a turkey at 40 yards, go ahead and put that bead on that bird. And you've covered up nearly the whole darn thing. Uh, a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, and your, your kill zone on a turkey for, for a good shot, I mean, what it's not much bigger than uh, two of your fists, you know, it's head. And then you kind of got the neck region. And that's that's a long way to shoot for at you know 35, 40 yards, knowing where you are. Cause you as you know, you hit it down that body and all that plumage, you're not gonna kill that bird. He's gonna run off. Little left, little right, you might not get enough pellets in him. Again, he runs off. And even in a worst case scenario, you wound him and he runs off, and then you're just feeding the coyotes, and nobody wants to do that. Uh so yeah, yeah so optics are a fantastic tool for a turkey gun. Uh, you can go scopes, you can go red dots, you can do the whole thing. I personally have a Delta Point Pro on my turkey gun. Uh just Your gives figure. me a little bit better so surprised. idea. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, you know, that 2.5 MOA dot, I'll put that on the bird's kind of neck head region and, and, and let it rip. Um, if you're going, if you're shooting longer, because a lot of turkey loads nowadays do allow you to really reach out. I mean, there, there are shells out there. 60 yards is not a big deal anymore. Maybe you yeah. want a scope. Uh, we used to do some turkey specific reticles. We don't anymore, but all of our scopes will would be more than suitable uh, for a turkey gun. Um, one thing I love with them is any kind of reticle where you might get like that center ring. Again, it's just perfect game point. Hold it right on that turkey's head. Bang. Yeah. You know, the Delta Point Pro is known for being, it's its honestly, it's a dot that a lot of other things are compared to, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of other red dots are compared to, and it's so 
dang durable. Um, people run it on ARs. They run it on pistols. They run it on hunting revolvers. They run it on, on shotguns. Is there one that like when you're talking to your, your engineers, your R and D, is there a particular gun that is the toughest one for, to put that on as far as durability goes? Well, honestly, in terms of recoil testing, nothing is more vicious than a, a pistol, right? Uh, you know, we we simulate all kinds of recoil here, but what is the the firearm that is toughest on optics is just that pistol. You know, it's it's, it's a short, quick break, right? Just bang, bang, bang. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we've really got to put the Delta Point Pro through some really next level uh, performance testing in order to to get it to the point where, or in order to get to the point where we were wanted to be, which is where it is at now. And you know, all of our stuff is is passing the Punisher testing. All of our stuff, whether that's the three hundred dollar BX Freedoms, all the way up to the three thousand dollar mark five hds everything passes the same testing but yeah it is it is that pistol level that uh makes things the most difficult and that's why i think you uh you know you you see some red dots start to fail is because it is just recoil on a pistol is different than it is on a rifle everything you know just how the energy is dispersed the physics are different well and it's not it's not that it's heavier recoil but mm-hmm. i mean if you're talking about mounting a red dot on the slide of a semi-auto mm-hmm. pistol Yep. It's going back and forth, you know, it's it's doing this the whole it's time. Different, yeah. You know, right a rifle, a rifle or shotgun are driving back into you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and like you said, but with the pistol, it's going back and forth. The slide's moving. There's just more motion, there's more math, and there's more science to it. Um, uh, so yeah, we we absolutely uh, make sure that it's going to hold up to that kind of that kind of torture. And it's 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 not easy. There are I, I don't doubt that there are a lot of red dot designs throughout the industry that have that have failed on their first couple tries on a pistol over the years. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, then you guys came out with the Delta Point Micro, which, mm-hmm. I, you know, this has been one that has been interesting because we got it in uh, a couple of years ago and went, what did Sean send us? What in the hell is this thing? And I'm going, I'm not, I don't know. This is weird. It's because it's super different. And then you put it on the gun and you, you draw and you're, and you're like, wait a minute, this is almost easier to pick up the dot on this thing. If it was for me, mm-hmm. I don't know why it doesn't make sense to me, but it was, it oh, was yeah. easy to run. Hey, I, I, I'm not going to argue with you. The, the Delta point micro uh, is not going to win any beauty contests. It is a, it is, it, it's a different looking little optic. And we, we did face a little bit of pushback. Uh, the comments on you guys' launch video a couple of years ago, when we first rolled it out are hilarious mm-hmm. um, because it, it vacillates in between. That is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And wow, I really want to try that. It's like a back and forth. Um, yeah, it's, we're all, we're all drawn to stuff. That's like, well, that's weird. That's different. Um, but I mean, basically it is a red dot that mounts into, you take the rear side off of the gun, whether that's a Smith and Wesson M P or a Glock. Those are the two that you have it for, correct? Yep. Those are the two official models. Uh, there are a few other handguns in the space because obviously they have largely cloned the rear sight of either the Glock or the M P that, it can work with, but we, we don't, you know, there's, there's no official list out there. There's a, yeah. you know, it's, as you know, the, you know, the, you get into the, the greater marketplace, there are some very, very similar product, very, very similar slides that it's going to work on, but Glock and MP are where we live right now. And it slides right into that, that rear sight uh, notch. Mm-hmm. And um, so it makes no, it no official gunsmithing required. If you want to go to the gun yeah. shop and have your guy do it, you can, uh, but it's, it's just a couple of springs and the tools are all in the box to, Take the slide, take the uh, the rear side off, slide the, the micro in, so you can do that at home. And you know when we we would talk about like fitting a holster or this and that, I mean basically it's super low profile and it's uh it's pretty neat. So I mean that's one that that really we get to play with all the new things. And mm-hmm. look, a lot of times it's like, well, what's is there something that's really new and unique and different? And you're like, well, they're making this gun in gray now. So <laughs> it's not exactly new. It's a new color or it's like, okay, it has a new configuration. It has a longer, but this one was like, no, there's nothing else like this. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, in, innovation is key. And, and, you know, we understand that sometimes it takes a, while, uh, a little while for folks to pick up new concepts and new ideas. Not everything's a home run right off the bat, you know, and, and the micro uh, you, you mentioned yourself. One thing you like about it is how easy it felt to you to shoot. Like right away you picked up on it. And because it's replacing those rear sights and will co-witness with the front sight, you're you're shooting really the the same grip and the same stance you would if you were shooting irons, right? Mm-hmm. You you put a Delta Point Pro, you put an armor, you put any any taller optic on a pistol, and you do have to change how you aim that firearm. 
you know, it's, it's, it's high. It's, it's, it's just different. And you, everybody, everyone that uses guns that way will adapt and they get used to it. But if you're an iron sight shooter and you want to move over to red dots, uh, maybe you're, you're just finally ready to try the new tech. Maybe your your eyes are failing, mine are bad to begin with. Maybe your maybe your eyes aren't what they used to be. You feel like you need that dial. You'd like to try it. You throw the micro on the Glock on the MFP. You don't have to change a thing. You still bring the gun up. You still present it the exact same way, and you're going to be right on your target. Yeah, it's that's an interesting idea too. It could be like a, it's a transition, kind of like okay, this is my next step before I maybe I'll go to a Delta Point Pro. But mm-hmm. maybe this is my my in between step, perhaps. Yeah, and the, um, the micro is is more concealable. Whether uh, you know, I'm a, I'm I'm a bigger fella, as, as you know, and as your your viewers may know, you know, six foot three, broad shouldered. Uh, so it's easier for me. I can conceal a larger firearm, especially you know in these winter months where it's cooler. A larger firearm, full size firearm, with the Delta Point Pro, I can do that. That's not an option everybody has. If you if you're no. practicing concealed carry, uh, the micro was you know it will absolutely fit on full size pistols, full size Glocks. But if you want to throw it on, you know, a carry size Glock, a 43 or something, and, you know, it's just everything's a little more compact, a little bit easier to conceal, a little bit easier to hide. And you mentioned holsters, and we ran this thing with several different Glocks and MPs through just about every holster we could find. There are one or two out there where eh, you might have to get creative, but 99% of the time, every holster is going to work with it. Okay. So I was going to ask you that question because there's so many different variations of Glocks. Does this fit on... All Glocks or most Glocks? Or? Any uh, so the 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 Glock edition is fitting on any non MOS Glock, non optics ready Glock. So gotcha. you know the reason we went that way to start with the micro is because there are millions of non MOS Glocks in the marketplace, as you yeah. have millions. Sure. Um, obviously, the optics you know they're they're building a lot more optics ready guns right now, just like a lot of pistol companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're I mean it doesn't mean that those, those other guns are going to go away. I think it's pretty cool. I, <laughs> if you haven't tried it out, it, it'd be, you know, find a buddy or find a range that rents this stuff to try it out because, because it's so different. People want to pass judgment, whether they think it's great or not great, but you really have to try it out to kind of see for yourself. And, and I'm not saying it's for everybody. I mean, there's going to be people who go, no, I don't like it. Okay, fine. Um, maybe that's not for you, but it's kind of neat to, as a, as an exercise, Sean, after this quick break, I want to talk more about reticles and choosing the right reticle. And how do we do that? New from arms Corps rock Island armory is the 5.0 all American made engineered, um, very cool pistol. What is this gun? It's nine millimeter, 17 plus one capacity, 4.9 inch barrel, but there's some real technology involved in making this a sweet shooting gun patented RVS recoil system, deeper bore axis, of course, ready for optics. It's a gun that shoots very flat. It's very comfortable to shoot, so you can shoot faster, follow-up shots and all that stuff. Go learn more at armscore.com. If you don't own a silencer yet, why not? Probably it's not because you don't want one, and it's probably not because you don't want to pay the $200 tax stamp. It's probably because you go, I don't know, it seems like a pain in the butt. Well, Silencer Central will help you with that, and they will walk you through the process and make it very easy. Go to silencercentral.com. You can set up a trust. You can set up an account. They will email you the papers. They will send you a little fingerprint set and make it really easy. And, of course, they have their own silencers. They have other people's silencers for pistols, for rimfires, for rifles, for even shotguns and the big stuff. Go to silencercentral.com to learn more. Remington Ammunition, trusted for generations. If you are a big green shooter, big green being what we call Remington, right? Your, your dad probably shot it. Your grandfather probably shot it. But they're doing new stuff over there. Core locked tipped. That came out a couple years ago. Nice innovation. Core locked copper. And I'm a big fan of all copper bullets. They just perform very consistently, and I'm, I'm excited about that. Of course, they came out with the 360 Buckhammer, Premier Long Range, Premier Bismuth for you waterfowlers out there, and then a bunch of other new things. If you haven't looked at what's new with Remington, they are cranking out new stuff, and they are cranking out a lot of ammo. Go over to remington.com to see more. There's a gun that Colt makes that I keep coming back to when I'm on their website, and it's the Night Cobra. 
What is the Night Cobra? It's an upgraded purpose-built Cobra revolver that's ready for carry. It's matte black finish. It's a DLC diamond-like carbon coating. What makes it really, it's dark, it's cool, it's concealable. Um, a bobbed hammer configuration. It still has the smooth trigger pull, but a bobbed hammer so it doesn't catch on anything. So it gives you options on carry, whether that's in the pocket, or whether that's in a holster, or whether it's in a bag. It's, I think everyone needs to have a small hammerless revolver as an option in your carry lineup of guns. So go over to Colt.com to learn more. All right, Sean, people have, reticles are one of those things that if you've been shooting rifles for a long time, there are some strongly held opinions about, mm -hmm. about reticles and all this stuff, MOA versus mill versus whatever. And you were just talking with, uh, Tom Gresham about reticle stuff. I mean, what are, what are you kind of seeing as like a trend right now as far as are people, what are they used to use? What are people trying to use? I mean, you guys seem to always have kind of being right on the cutting edge of, of good options and new options for shooters. So right now in the marketplace, what we are seeing, um, a little bit of everything you, you've, you've got the traditionalists out there, right? The guys that either want, um, just a standard duplex reticle or something similar, or, you know, you know, you've got a guy that's been around for a long time when he just asks for the crosshair reticle. <laughs> you just want a crosshair. That's what he's calling it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you've got, you go to the new school, right? You know, right now, PRS, NRL, all the competitive long range rifle stuff is red hot. I mean, we got more and more people every day pursuing that. And they, they want a reticle that can really, that's really built for them. That's built for, you know, fast, open, clear shooting, you know, holdovers, everything, everything you can put in there, right? Uh, the Christmas tree reticle styles still have a place, but you know they, you know they're not quite as popular as they once were. You know, really? guys want something. The people want, that? Uh, they want something that's a bit more open and clear, something where they can they can still you know see a wide field, see their whole target. Christmas trees, they they get busy now. You know, there are still guys out there. That's what they want to shoot, and we're going to keep building scopes for them. Okay. But you know, for example, our PR two mil, which is you know the top reticle in the competitive circuit right now. Is if I, I'd have to send you a, a you know a link to show you exactly what it looks like. It's hard it's hard for me to just describe it, but it's wide open. You know, it's got it's got some indicators, it's got some holdovers, it's got windage, but it, there's a lot of open space where you can just see your field of fire, you can see your targets, and it, it's just quick. It's fat. It's easy to get on target, easy to find what you're looking for, and you know that's then that's what we're seeing more on like that that new newer school. Now mill versus MOA always going to be kind of split down the middle. You've got uh, hunters who typically will lean more MOA mill. You got guys who are either shooting competitively or coming out of the military. That's just what they're familiar with, what, what they know, with, yeah. and what they want to keep shooting. Um, and both fantastic mediums. And, you know, then there's always the first and second focal plane debate, which I know you guys have covered before. And that, again, that usually comes down to what you're familiar with and what you know, but also application, right? There are times a first focal plane scope would be very valuable for hunting. And there'd be times a first focal plane scope would be a real pain in the butt for hunting because, Oh, you, you've run into something up close saying, well, your reticle's this big. Right. Yeah. Real, real tiny. So um, is, is there a, like a, a sweet spot? What do you kind of like to use or what have you been using? So, you know, I, I, because I have the glorious option to, to shoot whatever I'd like working mm -hmm. here, you know, in the field, I, uh, hunting, I will stick, always stick with, with MOA, uh, our VX5 HD, VX6 HD lines, uh, the very best hunting scopes in the market from the gold ring line. I usually go with uh, a Winplex reticle. If I can, I love the Winplex because with, so what that is, is it looks like the standard duplex, you know, there's no elevation holds, but then you've got windage uh, left to right. So you can hold for wind. And then I'll use our CDS dial to dial for distance if I need to. If it's something's getting out to three, four, five hundred yards, I'll use the the custom dial system. Dial for that, hold for wind, send it. Hopefully, knock down the moose. Um, you know, and then if I if I decide to go play around with the range or go go uh, learn a little bit more about PRS NRL, I will set up Mark Five HD, one of our mill scopes with with the PR two mill reticle. Okay. If, if a guy's looking for something to kind of live in the middle. We'd have to talk about it. We do. We we do have some of our uh, Mark Five HDs in an MOA build, so we can we can do long range, you know, long range precision, but with an MOA setup, if that's what a guy's familiar with, we can absolutely do that for him. You know, uh, and we've seen that we've seen plenty of guys take their Mark Five HDs and go hunt with them. It's just you know you got to have the right application and the, and the right kind of hunt in mind. I probably yeah. wouldn't climb into a into a, a you know a Louisiana deer stand with one, but there's plenty of Western hunting where they're very very valuable. Yeah, I mean you you guys truly do have 
I think some something for everyone as far as the different reticle options and mm -hmm. different size, different magnifications, all that. It's it's kind of unbelievable. Um, yeah, we do we do everything from uh, like I said the, the standard duplex reticle, which Loophole invented many many moons ago, uh, all the way up to like I said the Christmas tree stuff, the PR two mil. In the middle, you've got things like the Winplex, the Boone and Crockett, which Tom Gresham is is very fond of. We're we're trying to we're trying to get him to try something a little bit different. Nothing wrong with the Boone and Crockett, <laughs> but we just we just want, we want to challenge him a little bit. And get him to to play with some newer tech and some some newer options, but the Boone and Crockett reticle is still very popular with, especially with, uh, got you know hunters that have been around a little while. You know, like that's it, that, that one's got that was a little bit longer the tooth, but still had definitely had this place. But you know, I think that what I find, and it's it's the blessing and the curse, I guess, of what we do. Um, we'll show up to like a media event, right? Mm -hmm. And we're we're on the range with you shooting for two or three days and getting some instruction and trying out new products. And so we're always, this is, and this is John, Sean, this is the way I grew up. It's like, I never had my gun. It was always like, well, we're going hunting or we're going shooting. What's this dad? Um, oh, this is the new, whatever, try mm -hmm. it out. And so I was kind of used to that, but after a couple days of really getting a, a good amount of trigger time, you get very comfortable with that gun and that scope and that reticle. And it doesn't take that long. I mean, I know we can kind of be like, I like the duplex or I like, I like the old crosshair reticle, but think about not doing Kentucky windage. I mean, Kentucky windage, it's funny to talk about and all that, but really the people who know how to shoot, they look at that, like, why would you do that? And mm -hmm. which is probably a really good lead in to talk about, the custom dial system and I'm going to take a quick break and then we're going to dive right to that because I truly think that is the game changer for most shooters. You've probably heard of the PDP from Walther, but have you heard about the F series? It's the PDP F series. What does that mean? What does the F stand for? Well, I think it stands for female, but this may be a gun that's actually beyond just female shooters. It's, it's the F series um, features a reduced trigger reach, a reduced grip circumference, reduced force necessary to operate the slide, easier slide uh, racking, and just kind of a, all the tools you want for those with smaller hands. So PDP F series, it's a trusted platform. It's a really nice shooting gun with a lot of nice features, but for those with smaller hands, it's going to fit your hand better and you'll be more comfortable shooting it. So go check it out over at WalterArms.com. I know we've talked about it, but we have a training facility here at Gun Talk. It's called Range Ready. And you go over to RangeReadyStudios.com. We have a list of classes going on um, and coming up, you know, schedule of classes. If you've never taken a pistol class, a rifle class, and you, all you do is go to the range and make guns go bang. This is a game changer. And honestly, whether you take it from us or whether you take training from somewhere else, you need to commit to get some training and get better with your firearm, especially if you're intending to use it as a defensive gun. So go to rangereadystudios.com, check out our lineup of training courses, and I hope you'll come over and train with us. New from Marlin, or maybe I should say it's back. The Model 336 Classic. This was just announced. Of course, Ruger took over Marlin, and they've been putting out some really nice guns, but they want to do it the right way, so it's kind of been a slow go as far as like, what's the new thing going to be? Well, they're finally bringing back the Model 336. It's a 3030, but they kind of, what they do is they upgrade um, these guns to be more modern in the way they're manufacturing these. So it's a 3030, six plus one capacity with, of course, a tubular magazine. And the one they did is an American, it's kind of a very classic look. American black walnut, alloyed steel, it's blued, satin blued, brass bead uh, front sight, rear sight is a semi buckhorn. So it's very traditional. It's that gun that you look at it and go, yeah, it's just right. It's just what it should be. Go over to marlinfirearms.com to check it out and learn more. So, Sean, the custom dial system is 
to me, I think that I'm like the perfect customer for this because I understand ballistics, but I also like to, especially when hunting, minimize the stuff I have to deal with and the thinking and processing I have to do when we're waiting, we're, we're waiting for that deer to stop walking and we're ranging things and we're trying to think about the wind and every, all this stuff. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, give it to me, what is it and, and how do we use it? So the custom dial system, which is available on just about all of our gold ring scopes, um, you know, is, is really, I call it a cheat sheet for your dope, right? So the deal is you buy, we'll start, we'll say a VX5 HD, you throw it on, you know, we're going to say you're shooting a 270, um, mm -hmm. you throw it in your 270, you get yourself dialed in, you know, where you, you know, where you're at, you're zero for 100 yards, 200 yards, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, in the box, you're going to have a voucher. And once you've, once you've settled on what you're going to shoot, let's say you're, you're shooting a federal load, you can, you can come onto our website. You know, use your voucher. You're going to punch in some data from from the uh, the cartridge, everything from muzzle velocity to grain weight, things like that. Obviously, what what cartridge it is, what caliber it is, um, expected elevation, expected temperature, sight height, um, a few other bits of data. You send that to us, and we're going to send you a dial. And what that dial is going to do um, is replace your existing just MOA dial that's on the top of the scope. Um, so just with a little Allen wrench, you take the existing one off. You put the custom dial system on, bada bing, bada boom. Now the indicators on that, you're, it's still just quarter MOA clicks. Every click is still a quarter MOA. That doesn't change that, obviously. Um, but the indicators on there, rather than one being one MOA, two being two MOA, one becomes 100 yards, two becomes 200 yards, and so on and so forth. The zero to 200 yards, your dial will start at two, and every number going up from there will indicate the yardage. So you know, turn to 5.5, .5, it'd be 550 yards. And what we're trying to accomplish here is just make it easier for you to dial for elevation. You yeah. know, um, there, there are a lot of hunters out there, a lot of shooters who will, will true out their own scopes. And, you know, we've all seen it like on the stock, you know, you've got the little low card hastily taped on there at the last oh, second. And almost every hand. grits rifle has a printout taped to the stock. Yep. So we're, we're taking the printout and we're putting it on the dial. Uh, and it provide and that provides several advantages. One is just faster, right? Okay, I do, I do not need to be like, oh man, that, that animal's four hundred seventy four yards away. I I don't have to do that. I can mm -hmm. just turn to four four seven. It'll be you know it's roughly right there, and also lets you keep your your eyes down range, right? Because this is this is one thing that's probably I know it's happened to me. It's probably happened to you. All right, there's my elk. I ranged him. Okay, he's three hundred and fifty yards. Look at this and look up. And all of a sudden the field in front of me is empty. It's like, well, damn. <laughs> yeah. Where'd he go? Or, yeah, where'd he go? or what I ran into uh, last year was we were down in Texas doing an Oryx hunt and Scimitar Oryx. And there were a group of like 20, maybe 30. And the males and females both have horns and yeah. they're all together mingling. And your guy's going, okay, let me tell you which one the big one is. Cause you're like, dude, I don't ever look at Oryx. I don't know anything about this. And so you're literally looking at a group of 30 of them. And I mean, they're like, they're like in a scrum. They are all together. And he's going, okay, the one that just turned his head to the left, that one. Okay, wait, the one that's third to the left. I mean, you don't want to look away. Yeah, no. And, uh, you know, and so it's, it's just easier to get on your target. And the whole idea for dialing for elevation, obviously, is so you can just hold dead on. You hold on the vitals, hold on the steel, hold on whatever you're shooting at, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no more holding off hair. I'm, I, you know, I am, you know, I'm only in my thirties, but I am still just old enough that, that I remember when I was a kid, that was a strategy. If something was further away, it was hold all the Kentucky windage, like you said, holding off hair, hold at the top of his back. And like, we've all mm -hmm. heard that. You know, my dad had me shoot more than more than one deer that style, like holding off hair, right? And uh, you know, and it's just not something you have to do anymore. It's it's, it's just it's it's, it's so imprecise. Exact. I mean, yeah, it's, we, it's, I have a friend who's a really good shooter, done the Camp Perry thing, um, distinguished shooter there. And his thing, he's like, Look, when people talk about a flat shooting cartridge. I kind of think, you know, I wonder if they don't really know that much about ballistics and shooting because drop is consistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, drop is drop. It's consistent. So you don't have to think about it or, or judge it. It just is. It's, and it's like, I don't care if it's a 308 that actually isn't that flat shooting 
or it's something that really is flat shooting or, or even a more dramatic example. I mean, hell you can dial up on a 45 70 and hit targets at 300 yards. If you, if you need to, it's just math. Um, so I love that you can just go now how you kind of mentioned it, but people are going to say, well, is it just like one, two, three, four, or how specific, how precise can we get with the, the custom dial system? So, you know, as you, as you go up, there's going to be a 1.5, a 2.5, uh, and then just as you continue around your revolutions, because it's uh, the, all the, at least in the VX5 HD, the VX6 HD, you deal with two turn dials. Um, it will just be eventually become like seven, eight, nine, but you're going to, you know, you're going to still have clicks in between. So you can, you can kind of ballpark it a little like, okay, I need to be between the eight and the nine if, if we're going to try to shoot something at 850 and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you still need to obviously shoot a little bit with your rifle and, and get comfortable with it. Among other things, I wouldn't. I would never advise you know taking shots out five, six, seven hundred yards if you've not done it before. Um, yeah. That's they're, they're, you know, yeah. There are you know there are, there are a lot of rain. I know it's tougher in the in the east. I'm originally from the east coast. I know we don't. There's just not as much land out there to get into bigger ranges, but they they are out there to go practice and try if you if you're willing to just maybe stretch the miles a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fantastic system. The whole idea is to just never hold off hair, never you know be be guessing again, right? And if when you pair it with one of our uh, one of our range finders with our TBR technology, True Ballistic Range, which is going to give you the angle compensated distance for your load, it's perfect because obviously you know when you're shooting if you're shooting from one ridge one ridge to the other like that. You know, mm. 450 might not be 450, right? If you're shooting, yeah, you know, at a big steep angle, either up or down, can change what the real distance is Mm -hmm. so our range finders you know you can select which load you're shooting it's going to say okay you are uh okay this is what you need to shoot to you dial and send it you range dial shoot it's it's just the fastest simplest system out there right now for a hunter and it's something that i think it's a way that people maybe if you're if you're kind of old school that you can start getting using some technology to help you be better without having to be a, a sniper, right? You don't, mm-hmm. you don't have to know all this stuff. I mean, you can, can you push a button on a range finder yeah. and then can you go, it says 400. Okay. I'll find the four on the dial. I can, I can handle this. Yeah. And, you know, and I would put it up against, uh, against any other system in the world, especially, you know, when it comes to speed, right? You want to be fast. You, I, I get it. You know, sometimes, Sometimes that critter is only going to be out there for a couple of seconds. You're not, they're not always going to come out and stand broadside. As a matter of fact, I don't, I don't find many that do. Uh, actually I do. They're all those. They just stand, they'll just yeah. stand up there broadside. The ones all day. that you're not hunting. That's yeah, the ones. They will stand there all day. Or if you got a species you don't have a tag for, he'll stand there all day. All day. Uh, <laughs> he might even lay down and just wait for you. <laughs> but you know, I, so I get it when you're hunting, a, when you're hunting an animal, a lot of times you, you, you it's gotta be quick, right? It, it takes almost no time to just turn that dial. And it's and I'd be willing to run it up against anybody saying, well, I can I can hold over faster. Well, I have never I have not seen many people that can just get on a scope and be like, this is exactly where I need to hold over bang. Right. You know, there's they're either guessing, which is not what you want to do with game, or they're going to take a second and be like, eh, is, is that 36 inches? Is this 36 inches? Yep. And also, I mean, if you're if you're saying I'm just going to hold higher. Now you're just holding in space. Mm-hmm. It's just not precise and what you're talking about you dial it and then you put your crosshairs exactly where you want the bolt to hit that's where it's going to hit one thing i wanted to kind of go back on is like the way you set this up and it probably depends on the personality of of the shooter i mean you probably have people who would look at the box of ammo and use the stats from that but i would i would think that if you want to be as precise as possible that you actually want to go maybe like chrono it through your specific Mm -hmm. rifle i mean this is it's specific to the load and it's specific to the gun. You can't swap this dial on different things. Yep. So, you know, to start, yeah, we, you know, we suggest, we, we highly recommend crowding your rifle and getting your true speed because as a good friend of mine in the industry likes to say, every rifle is an individual. Um, even if, if a box, even if a box says that, you know, muzzle velocity is going to be say 2950, there's a reasonable chance that your rifle is throwing it out a little bit faster or a little bit slower than that. Um, especially if you've got a new gun and it's got to get shot in anyway. Um, so we, we do recommend chronoing it. If you just have the box data, if you know, you know, own a chronograph, you're a little intimidated by going to do that. That's okay. You're still going to be, you're still going to be able to kill animals out to very, very reasonable distances. You can still get that CDS and it's still going to be very, very close, but if you want precise, you know, like, you know, pin drop, then yeah, we, we will ask for the, the chronographic data. Um, the dial itself yet, yeah, it can't really hop to different cartridges. 
you know, one uh, if you're shooting a 150 grain 270 and then go up to 180 grain 270, it's going to be different. The the dial yeah. will get you, you know, into the ballpark, but it's not going to be anything you you want for shooting live animals. Well, um, and also but, you think about you have to you have to try to if you want to be precise. You said, I mean, 200 yards. It's maybe it's not going to be that big of a deal, but mm -hmm. if you're if if you're getting out to 400 500 yards, mm -hmm. that is going to be a margin for and, error just increase rapidly with this right and also i mean i would what i would do hopefully everybody would do this you you put it on and then try to confirm that dope right you go okay mm -hmm. i'm going to shoot it at 100 200 300 400 and and if everything's right it's going to be pretty darn easy because you're going to go mm -hmm. well okay that was like stone simple i literally just made four shots four hits it was nothing Mm -hmm. And then if, uh, so then let's say you, you, you decide to change loads, right? You're like, all right, I don't want to shoot the federal anymore. Now I want to shoot a nozzle. I want to shoot nozzler or something like that. That's okay. Um, go ahead and go to the range, get yourself re-zeroed, run the chronograph again, and we will sell you a new dial for like 80 bucks. Uh, easy. Okay. Okay. Very cool. The CDS custom dial system available. You said on most gold ring scopes, right? Yep, uh, there so there's some stuff there's some stuff in the VX Freedom line that doesn't go CDS, um, and then we've got some low power stuff in like the fives and sixes that isn't necessarily configured for the CDS. Uh, but every the entire VX three HD line and most of the fives and sixes will will have that that CDS option. And a lot of the freedoms too. It's just there there are a few. It's just okay. We this scope is probably not going to be going on a long range uh, system, yeah. so we just don't offer the the option. Yeah. Um, and probably I would think that depending on the load depends on how far you can get out with it. Right. Cause I mean, something's going to need a lot of turns and there's only mm -hmm. so much mechanical adjustment yeah. you can make. So to, yeah. So the, the, with the freedom and the three HDs that offer the CDS, you're only going to get one turn. So that's something to, to kind of keep in mind once they're one turn dials. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's something to keep in mind based on how far you expect or would like to shoot. If you if you're thinking okay, I really want to go out to some distance, the VX5 HD and the VX6 HD will offer two turn dials. So you can go that means you the two revolutions in that dial. You'll be able to dial out further. Uh, then if if you really want to go extreme long range, we're going to have to upgrade you to the Mark 5 HD. That's a full three turn dial. Uh, the CDS is is you can get a CDS for the Mark 5 HD. It's not it's something necessarily something we advertise uh, because at, at that point, you know, we most guys are actually truing out their own scopes, but we we right. can do it. If you're if you're interested, I think I sent one to KJ because we all know he can't shoot. Oh, thank God! Jeez, he needs the help. <laughs> um, all right, Sean. Before we wrap up, I want you to talk about the the two to ten that was new for you guys this year because I was kind of excited about that one. The two, so the Mark Five HD two to ten, yeah, we we launched that at Shot Show. Uh, the Mark Five HD family has been around a little over five years now, and uh, it launched in launched in 2018. It has become the dominant uh, long-range precision rifle scope on the market, especially that 5 to 25 with the PR2 mil reticle, which we've already talked about. Um, but we've really been expanding the family over the years. You know, we added MOA additions to it a few years back. Um, the 3.6 to 18 came out essentially right at launch. Um, we've, we've played with reticles. Obviously, the PR2 is very new. And then this year, we want to continue building out that family. So we rolled out the the 2 to 10, right? Um, it's just a smaller, more compact scope, uh, light Lightweight, rugged, clear. It's still, you know, from I don't have one in front of me to hold because more I'd walk you through a little bit further. But you know, essentially, from the elevation adjustment back, it's the exact same scope in terms of uh, the Mark V. You know, you're getting the the same three turn, three turn dial. You're getting the same 35 millimeter main tube. You're getting the same adjustments. Um, mm -hmm. One thing we are excited about is we 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 kept the uh, the side focus parallax adjustment. A lot of two to tens, a lot of a lot of scopes in that ballpark do not allow for a, a side focus. You know they're just not right. designed to have one. We still want the two to ten to really be able to reach out past a thousand yards. At which point you're going to need that. So we left that on there. Um, Thirty millimeter objective lens. So it is like I said, it's real compact. The whole the whole package is eleven inches. It's it's twenty four ounces, and That's it's awesome. it's just a it's it's designed for. You know, carbines, recce rifles, kind of that marketplace. But if you want to throw it on something and still go out, still go long, you you absolutely can. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's not, I don't know, I guess it could be considered a low power variable optic because, I mean, two, two power is low power to me. <laughs> I know the traditional way would be it's a one to something. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's kind of like that, but with a little bit more, uh, some more features to it. So um, very cool. Yeah. The, the two to 10 is one to look at, especially I love that it's 
it's smaller, it's compact, it's lighter. So you're, you're getting some performance, but not adding as much weight perhaps. Oh um, yeah. Uh, and uh, I will get, I'll, I'll actually get a couple out in the mail to you guys. So you've got them. I believe I intend to, I intend to visit here in the next few months. So I'll get you yeah. guys set up before I come on down. Yeah, dude, you got to come on down and see what we've been doing over here. We we're shooting guns all the time out in the backyard. Yeah, I, it sounds like something I got to come see, especially if KJ's not going to be there. Can we arrange for that? Yeah, fingers crossed. We'll, <laughs> we'll, you and I will coordinate. He'll be out of town. It'll be great. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. Sean, thanks for being on with us, man. No, thanks for having me this morning, Ryan, and uh, hope everything is going fantastic down there, and I will see you guys soon. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. That's it for us. We'll see you guys next time on Gun Talk Nation. To see all of Gun Talk's content, go to guntalk.com, guntalktv.com, or sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter.